welcome to Yarngasm. I'm Kristen and this is episode 243. If you are a returning viewer, thank you so much for coming back. And if you are a new viewer, welcome to the podcast. Uh, this is a podcast about knitting, spinning, hand on yarn, sewing, and making all the things in Brooklyn, New York where I'm from. And I live with my husband, Dennis, and our adorable cat, Bella. And as always, I'm so happy that you're taking some time out of your day to chat about those things with me. And welcome to the podcast. Uh, I'm going to pop on the screen very quickly uh, where you can follow me on the interwebs. As always, I'm most active on Instagram, on Ravelry. And if you haven't already, please join the Yarngasm Ravelry group where there's lots of chatter happening. And it's the place to be if you want to join in on the knit alongs and just general chatter about the podcast, ask questions. And it's a really fun place to be. Uh, so definitely hop on over there and check it out and uh, as always email is the best way to get in touch if you have a question about the podcast uh, and yeah I just kindly ask that you don't ask me questions via Ravelry or any other social media platform because I rarely check those places and I just get inundated with lots of um, messages on there so everything just tends to get buried so email 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 is the best way to get in touch on a timely response um, from me. So yes, uh, again, welcome to the podcast. Uh, if you are a regular viewer, you might have noticed that I skipped another week of recording last week. Summer is just, it's one of those times of the year that when everything, like when it rains, it pours, everything happens. And uh, just, I, I was planning on podcasting, but there was just so, so much going on that week. Uh, it just, again, was not in the card. So I did not record, uh, but I've missed you and I'm glad to be back. Uh, I hopefully like once the weather starts getting, you know, cooler and people just want to hide away in their hidey holes and homes and not leave the house because it's too cold or whatever, what have you, I'm sure I will get back onto the regular weekly schedule of recording. But as it seems right now, I'm on a bi-weekly recording schedule. Um, although it's, you know, I do plan on recording weekly, but sometimes things pop up and Say la vie, life happens. So, but I'm back this week. I have lots to share with you. Uh, so welcome back. Uh, and if you're a new viewer, welcome to the podcast. And um, I'm trying to think what else I wanted to, what other kind of ad mini stuff I want to chat about. Uh, yeah, so I mean, last week, as I mentioned, there was just a lot going on. But one of the highlights, uh, which I guess I will try and chat about more about in Blather, the segment at the end of the podcast, uh, Becky from the Stringing It Together podcast was in town. Uh, if you're not familiar, she has the Stringing It Together podcast. She's uh, Soprano Knits on, I want to say Instagram and pretty much everywhere else on the web. Anyway, she's awesome. I first met up with her at the Edinburgh Yarn Festival. We hit it off really well and she was in town and I was like, we have to meet up. So yeah, she was in town. We got to, I was lucky enough to get together with her uh, two days uh, and you know, we just had a really nice time. We had a lovely lovely lunch together before she took off back to Germany uh, and yeah it was just really great getting to see her again uh, and yes so anyway I, again I will talk more about that in the leather segment but that you know was one of the highlights that um, I think is worth mentioning so I'm um, trying to think what else is new uh, as far as announcements are concerned uh, the elephant in the room actually right behind me uh, my Oracle shawl is published so it is currently available on Ravelry and on my website, volanvineyarns.com for your purchasing and downloading and knitting pleasure. So hop on over there and get yourself a copy if you've been waiting. Uh, and I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you so much again to all my wonderful test knitters and my tech editor and uh, all the support from uh, you guys who uh, it's just had a really wonderful reception. Uh, and lots of people have been very excited about it for its release so i just want to say thank you so much to everybody for all your support and your excitement and i cannot wait to see all the wonderful uh oracle shawls that you knit so and yes uh, i created a thread in the the volenvine yarns ravelry thread uh there are two i have two uh ravelry groups there's the yarngasm ravelry group and the volenvine yarns ravelry group uh so I actually created a knit along thread for the Oracle shawl. So if you can hop on over there and join in the fun. Uh, I've really been seeing, uh, uh, many of you have already gotten part, past part of um, some of the sections and uh, yeah, it's just gonna be so fun to see them grow and I'm, I'm so excited. So uh, lots of really awesome color combinations and uh, yeah, super excited. So, all right, that's one thing that I wanted to chat about. Um, the other thing, I'm trying to think. Um, yeah, I, I guess, 
big announcement uh, I, that I wanted to chat about. I was debating whether or not I wanted to talk about it in the intro or in shop update, but it's kind of big news. So many of you obviously know that uh, I'm a hand dyer. I dye yarn out of my home here in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, Dennis and I, we, we bought a house uh, two years ago, which is crazy. Uh, and yeah, with the intention of, you know, getting more space so I can accommodate my, my my yarn dyeing business, which is amazing. Uh, but yeah, I have this room as my office and I use the kitchen to dye yarn and you know, it's it's a great space. Um, and we actually have a basement unit, which we have been renting out for the past few years. And lo and behold, our tenant decided to move and she has just moved out. And Dennis and I were chatting like, you know, while she was living there, I'm like, you know, it would be great to expand, be able to dye more yarn, maybe hire some help, you know? And, you know, we decided, yeah, after she moves out, I would take over the downstairs basement area as my dye studio slash office. So lo and behold, she just moved out uh, as of August 1st and the space is clear and you guys, Full and Vine Yarns has a, has a dye studio. We have an actual dye studio. It is, you guys, I'm super excited for it. Um, I posted about it on Instagram, but uh, yeah, I will be moving out of my home office. This will be my craft room slash Dennis's office because right now he, he has a little, he's, he doesn't really use an office, but anyway, that's neither here nor there, but uh, he's finally gonna be able to move his stuff in here and we can share this area and then I can move as, you know, craft slash office area. And then downstairs will be just specifically for Volan Vine Yarns and it's gonna be amazing. So I'm having a lot of fun moving stuff in. Uh, it's still a work in progress, but hopefully um, I will have things up and running soon. Uh, I'm just getting a couple more supplies, uh, more fur equipment, furniture type stuff, uh, and yeah, it should be up and running soon, but I'm super excited. Uh, and yeah, so that means I will be able to be, I will be able to dye more yarn and uh, you know, yeah. So more news on that soon. Uh, so anyway. I'm babbling on way too much for this intro. I have a lot to share with you this episode, lots of uh, no finished objects, but I do have some whips and some projects and some stash enhancements to share with you. So let's get to it. Uh, so next up, what's on my needles? Okay, so first on my needles uh, is the Love You Baby Shawl by Sosu Knits. And here is what I have so far. So I'm, this is, well, a little backstory. This is part of the uh, Love You Baby Knit Along that is being hosted by Karen Posniak of uh, Do You Knit, the yarn shop that I have trunk shows occasionally at in Westfield, New Jersey. Uh, but Sosu Knits, um, Suzanne Sommer, Sommers or Sommers, I wanna say, uh, designed this shawl pattern specifically for Do You Knit. And yeah, it's, she's hosting a knit along and I'm kind of, I'm casually, participating in the knit along. I'm not, I, I realized I haven't been posting my progress or anything in the threads, unfortunately, just not enough hours in a day. But um, yeah, I, I have to make a confession. I cast this on and then I just, I there's a spreadsheet that you ha uh, that helps you keep track of, you know, your increases and decrease rows and I lost track. Even though I had the spreadsheet and I thought I was keeping track, I wasn't keeping as well of track as I thought I was. So I totally, lost my place and just decided, you know what, it's a looking a little wonky. I'm just going to start from scratch. So a week ago, I recast on, finished <laughs> the main, the first part of the, the pattern. And yeah, I'm mid row right now, but you guys, I'm so happy with the way it's turning out. Um, and I was very adamant this time around about keeping track of where I was on the spreadsheet. Um, and yeah, it's just, if, if you, if you're just diligent about, you know, it, it's, you really, the spreadsheet, is just there to help you and to keep track and I, I found it very helpful so yeah anyway um yeah so anyway yeah I, I was I was very attentive to the spreadsheet this time and I wish I could show this to you but no I'm mid-row oh hi Kristen um here's where I am with it and it's just the first section is just a whole bunch of gorgeous glorious brioche uh and I'm using hedgehog fibers in the main colorway is um what is it um uh, Goodness, what's that colorway? Juniper, juniper is the main colorway. So you can see it here, it's this just gray, it's gray with um, just really awesome neon speckles. And then on the flip side for color B, I'm using Hedgehog Fibers Fly. And for color C, which I finally got to, I'm using Hush. 
and I really just love the way these colorways are playing together. I saw them together and I was like, yes, I have to make this happen. It's just so summery and fun. Totally out of my comfort zone, but it just screamed summer to me, so I had to make it happen. And I actually went down, I believe, two needle sizes. I believe the pattern calls for US size 6, uh, 4 millimeter needles, and I went down to a size, US size 4, 3.5 millimeter needles, needle. And um, I love the, I really enjoy the fabric that the smaller needle size creates. Um, the six was just way too, way too wide and it was just like a very loose and holy fabric, if that makes any sense. So um, yeah, it, it might just be a gauge thing, but I really like the way that this size is turning out. So yay, that's where I am. And I'm using Chiaogu uh, Red Lace because that's the only size, <laughs> US size four circular that I own apparently. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah, if you're familiar with Xiao Goose, they have like this really awesome um, red cable, which I I like, but not, I will say, not for soft knitting. I find it doesn't, it's not flexible enough. It's very, it has, how do I describe it? it it's very, not stiff, but it's very, it's a firm cable. Uh, I could see it, I don't know. I haven't gotten any kinks in my Xiao Goo, uh cables at all that I can remember, but I could see it getting kinked up a little bit if you if you squish it, if you tend to squish your, your knitting needles. But anyway, I like Xiaogu's. They're not my favorite. As you all know, Haya Haya Sharps are my favorite go-to uh, knitting needles, but definitely love uh, a good Xiaogu red lace knitting needle, needle occasionally. So that's my love you baby shawl. Uh, I'm, I think the knit along is over. I could be wrong. I have to double check the thread, but hop on over to the Do You Knit uh, Ravelry group where you can get more info about this uh, and, and the spreadsheet download, but super fun, uh, super intuitive knit so far. It's just all about keeping track of that one increase slash decrease row, and, which the spreadsheet definitely helps with. So yeah, loving it, loving it, loving it, loving it. The other project that I want to update you on is the um, the Brooklyn Tweed bl baby blanket that I was knitting for my friend's baby shower. <laughs> I did not meet the deadline. I, st I had not put a dent in it since I last showed it to you. Mega fail. Uh, I, I, again, last week was just... I wasn't feeling it and I didn't want to work on it if I wasn't feeling it. You all know, you all know the feeling, guys, right? So... I probably shouldn't have to explain more, but you know, I have, I think about six more weeks before she's due. It's crazy um, how quickly time flies. It was nuts because the last time we had seen them, it was Christmas. She wasn't pregnant yet. And then all of a sudden, like a month or two ago, Dennis's friend said, yeah, uh, she's pregnant, whatever. Anyway, um, yeah, it was a little surreal, like seeing them again after, since Christmas and then like, whoa, there's a baby in there. So <laughs> anyway, uh, it was really good seeing them, but I will have the baby blanket done the next by the next time we see them. Um, I didn't tell them that I was knitting it for them. I got them a backup gift just in case, but uh, yeah, I'm still working on it. Uh, so I will keep you updated as soon as you know, I put another dent in it and hopefully finish it. So, uh, yeah, that's it. And that's the Brooklyn Tweed Baby Blanket by Jared Flood. Um, I'm not even going to show it to you because I talked about it last week and I had made no progress on it. Um, yes, so the next project that I'm working on, again, I've been working on the Love You Baby shawl pretty monogamously the past week or so because I just wanted to get past that point, so I was very dedicated to like getting past that first part. Uh, so now that that's done, I can probably focus on more projects. So uh, the other project that I've been working on, pretty, uh, not this one, um, what is it? Oh, living in my fringe supply bag that I love. Um, I decided to cast on another pair of socks, like you do, uh, because I was hanging out with some friends and knitting friends, of course, and what better project to cast on than a pair of vanilla socks. And I cast on my Felicis. <laughs> so this is Knit Picks Felici in the steamer trunk colorway. And yeah, self-striping. And it's one sock. And I'm kind of knitting these concurrently. Yes and no. Uh, and I have my little sugar tot narwhal from Nina. Yay. This is sugar. Yeah, it's uh, Narwhal Progress Keeper by Sugar Tots. I love this little guy so much. Um, anyway, keeps me company while I'm knitting. Uh, but yeah, here is one sock, and then I cast on another sock, the second sock. <laughs> so here's where I am on that. So yeah, you can see what I mean by I'm kind of sort of knitting these concurrently. Um, 
but yeah I'm basically doing a fish lips kiss heel these are very matchy matchy uh, but I've also been kind of using these as a practice for continental knitting and you can definitely see here my gauge is much looser than here we go because this one I just knit purely with my with my right hand so I have a tighter gauge <laughs> and I can knit quicker with it and yeah it's I, it got to a point where I was knitting continental and I was getting it but it wasn't quick enough and I just like said screw it I'm, I'm just gonna revert back to my English style knitting because I do I, I do knit relatively fast with my with my right hand um, I haven't given up on continental knitting I'm still practicing all here and there but I don't know I wanted a zoom it was a project that I kind of wanted some instant gratification with and I wasn't happy with the fabric that I was getting with the continental with my continental knitting so yeah I don't know I reverted back so I'm okay with that I, I just got kind of tired uh, or not tired but like um, I wasn't happy with having like mixed gauge with my project so especially with the baby blanket you could tell where I was knitting continental versus um, English style and I wasn't having it so I reverted back I reverted but that's fine because honestly there is no right or wrong way to knit you've got to go with the way that you are most comfortable knitting with so as of now I'm very comfortable knitting with my English style methods so anyway um what else did I want to say? Uh, did I get this colorway right? I always feel like I mess up the colorway. So it's Nipic Steamer Trunk. Okay, so I got that right. Um, so, what else? What else? What else did I want to talk about today? And I'm dipping into the accents. It's crazy. So before I move on to my next whip, my work in pro next work in progress, uh, I do also want to mention, because I usually forget to <laughs> talk about it, the, the Box of Socks Knit Along, uh, which is my year-long uh, knit along for knitting at least 12 pairs of socks within the year of 2017. So uh, yeah, like again, it's ongoing, it's, it's massive, it's epic. Check it out in the in the in the yarn gas and Ravelry group. So much inspiration happening there, and yeah, more details on that in the thread. But yeah, it's a year long knit along uh, that kicked off January first, two thousand seventeen, and goes all the way until uh, January first, two thousand eighteen. And the idea is to knit yourself. It's a selfish knit along. Knit yourself an entire box of twelve pairs of socks. So that's technically a pair a month, uh, but you don't have to knit a pair in a month, so it's, you know, go at your own pace, but uh, yeah, to enter to win for prizes, you need at least 12 pairs of socks, uh, and that counts as uh, a pair, meaning uh, each sock to qualify uh, needs a definitive cuff, leg, heel, foot, and toe, and must use of or over uh, 50 grams of yarn. So anyway, just a quick mention there, uh, but yeah, it's an awesome knit along. Definitely hop in, hop on the bandwagon if you haven't already. There's still time if you're, if you're a fast sock knitter. So I uh, just wanted to give that a quick mention, but yes, okay, moving along, uh, we have the Damyaka Lopa knit along that I am co-hosting with the lovely and amazing and talented uh, Ellie of Skein Dear Knits, which is a wonderful podcast you should check out. I met her at Edinburgh Yarn Festival and she's just so wonderful. So uh, definitely hop on over to YouTube and check out her podcast because she's in my eyes the queen of color work because <laughs> uh, yeah, everything she makes is just so inspiring and amazing and she had mentioned this pattern on her podcast a while back and I was just I fell in love. I was like, I have to make that. And it had been a while since I cast on anything color work. Um, and this seemed like an epic feat for me to take on. And I was like, you know what? It's a challenge. Let's challenge myself. So I cast on a Damyaka Lofa uh, or Ladies Flea Cardigan uh, by the lovely and talented uh, Pine Gori on Ravelry. So I'm sorry, I'm blanking on your actual real name, but she has another name other than Pine Gori, but she's known as Pine Gori on Ravelry. So yeah, here is where I am on my Damyaka Lopa. Still working my way through the yoke. Uh, I'm taking this to Cape Cod with me so I can actually put a dent in it. Um, but I really, 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 really love the way this is turning out. Uh, I don't know if you can see that. So yeah, and this is uh, Jameson Spindrift yarns. Uh, so I'm, I believe I'm using five different colorways. So let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, six colorways, I believe, maybe seven. I can't count. Anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, making my way through here and there is definitely, there is going to be steaking involved, which is something I've never done before, but there's like my steaking strip right here. Uh, so you can tell where you have to cut up eventually. 
and I am gonna have a lot of ends to weave in. I've already started to, like, just a little, like, weaving in ends piecemeal, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's a hot mess behind here, you guys. <sighs> so, anyway, that, that'll be a fun project. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to talk about, uh, are the needles. Uh, I was probably gonna talk about these in stash enhancement, but since I'm talking about this right now. Uh, these are some new needles that I'm trying. They're, you've probably heard of them. They're Likey, I believe that's how you pronounce it. L-Y-K-K-E. Uh, Driftwood Knitting Needles. And I saw the set. I was at, um, I was at both Brooklyn General and uh, a string thing with Allison several weeks ago, and they, I first saw them there and they had the kits, the, uh, the set, the, uh, interchangeable needle sets, and I got to try them and they were, they were like a dream to knit with. And um, I was, I was, I will be honest, I was very tempted to treat myself to an interchangeable needle set, but I'm like, you know what? I wanna, I wanna actually work with a, set, a pair before I actually invest. So I figured, all right, the needles, I was using high, high sharps to knit this. And I will be totally honest, it was a little, for some reason, again, the relationship, the, the feel of the yarn with the metal needle, I was not getting the, um, I don't know, like, it just wasn't feeling as smooth as it should be uh, knitting with it. It was a little, I will say, like, I don't know, tacky is the word? Not tacky. or It wasn't a smooth knit, I will be totally honest. Um, but I did like the, the sharp point of the high highs, but at the same time, um, yeah, I just wasn't liking the glide of the stitches across the needle. So I figured, all right, you know, maybe um, wood is the way to go with... 100% Shetland wool. So um, I decided to take uh, some Likey driftwood needles for a test drive. So I bought myself some. You can actually get them on Amazon. Uh, so I got a US size 2.5 millimeter, uh, I'm sorry, a US size, a US 2.5 needle, and that's th a three millimeter needle in millimeters. So I am loving these. I really, 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 really love these. Um, and I'm a true believer where, you know, it's like you find needles that actually work for you and it's definitely good to have a go-to set of metal needles and a go-to go set of uh, wooden needles. Because again, it, depending on the type of yarn you're using, the textures of the, uh, the yarn versus the, the material of the needles, I mean, that has to create some harmony there. So I don't know, am I, am I making any sense? I, Anyway, um, I'm really liking the relationship between the Driftwood and the Jameson Spin Drift. Uh, so I think, I think I might just treat myself to a set of these because I'm in love. I'm totally in love. And can we talk about the join? Look at this join. It's, it's seamless. It, it doesn't exist. It's just like, it glides. It's awesome. Um, and they're beautiful too. They are beautiful knitting needles. Um, I am, I am sold. I'm sold on these. Uh, yeah, so I have nothing but good things to say about the Likey needles. Uh, and if I'm pronouncing that incorrectly, please let me know. <laughs> Everyone, if you've been watching the podcast, you know I am the queen of mispronunciation. Uh, and yes, I just want to say thank you to everybody who let me know how to pronounce chalet or chalet. I still can't pronounce it. I've received several emails with varying, um, pronunciations, but... Uh, I believe it's pronounced Shali, uh, which is a, a fabric, a fabric type that I made my Gertie dress out of that I shared with you last time. So anyway, I digress. Uh, so this is my Damiaka Lopa, and yes, it's a work in progress. So yeah, and again, this is a ca very, very casual, fun knit along that we're hosting. We don't have an end date in sight yet, but you know, we're just kind of letting we're going with the flow, and once we realize that people have completed their Damiaka Lopas, or, you know, when it seems like, okay, yeah, this is going to be a good place to um, set the deadline, Ellie and I will go ahead and do that. But yes, we are, uh, we've created groups in both of our respective Ravelry groups, uh, Skein Deer Knits group, and then the Yarn Gas and Ravelry group. So hop on over to either of those, double dipping, highly encouraged. Prizes will be given when we do finally set on a deadline. So. Yay! Ah, uh, yes. Okay. And I think that is it for works in progress. I'm trying to think what else. Uh, um, okay, so I'm going to chat mail because I do have something really quick to share with you uh, that a lovely viewer sent to me. And if you are familiar with 
um, the Shawl Society too, uh, which I talk about pretty much every single week on the podcast because I love Helen Stewart's patterns. Uh, the first installment of that, uh, that pattern club, it's a six month pattern club, and uh, the first installment was the Fairy Hill Shawl. And a lovely viewer contacted me. She was a test knit, a test knitter for, she was a test knitter for the Fairy Hill Shawl and said that she has like a lot of shawls doesn't know what to do with them, wants to send, um, you know, some of her shawls to knitworthy recipients. And she thought, you know, since she knit the, the fairy hill shawl out of my yarn, uh, I would, I would like it. So I said, yes, I would be happy to take it off of your hands, use it as a sample. And, you know, she sent me photos of it and it's absolutely beautiful. Um, and the lovely Tracy, uh, if you're watching, thank you so much for sending this my way. Um, but yeah, she sent me her test knit for the fairy hill shawl and it is absolutely beautiful and this is i believe it looks like volant yeah obviously it's <laughs> volant vine yarns my hand dyed yarn in the angry orchard colorway and i'm just trying to confirm whether or not i believe it's uh my footsie base i don't know if she used like because i had several other bases before but i want to say i believe this is my footsie base correct me if i'm wrong tracy but it's absolutely beautiful i love it I love it and this will be a beautiful sample to have at my next track show um yay so i want to knit this myself actually because yeah again it's a beautiful shawl and and she also did this re i love i just noticed this the other day but she actually sewed a little tag onto it i don't know if you can see that it's a little sheepy and then on the flip side it says made by tracy i need to get some of these in my life because that is genius um yeah, so clever and such adds like such a nice personal touch. So thank you so much again, Tracy, for sending this my way. I love it and truly appreciate all, you know, I truly appreciate it. So yay. Um, and that's pretty much all the mail that I have to share with you this week. Um, I'm trying to think. Okay, so I am going to move along to stash enhancements. So let me go get what I have to show you. Okay, so if you tuned in last week, I made a confession that I've crossed over to the dark side and want to tackle doilies. Yeah, I want to crochet all the doilies. I don't know where this is coming from, but uh, yeah, I, I just have this massive desire to create doilies. And I will be totally honest, I have not had time to sit down and spend time with an actual crochet doily pattern. Uh, so, uh, But I did go ahead and create a doily brigade thread in the Yarngasm Ravelry group if you are so inclined to join in. Uh, it's not an, it's not a crochet along, it's just, it, well it is, but it's a very casual one, there aren't any prizes, it's just whoever wants to hop on the bandwagon with me and share crochet doily patterns or crochet patterns, um, you know, hop on over there and just share away. Uh, but yeah, I hopefully will have some time next week to get some crocheting done. But uh, it has been something that I wanted to, you know, I, I wanted to get the right tools. I wanted it to be an enjoyable experience. And I know tools, tools, tools are, it, are everything when it comes to enjoying a project. So I have a couple of, um, what are they? Etimo tulip um, crochet hooks that I really enjoy using. I have like a maybe like two or three that I use um, on and off or, you know, random, you know, either obviously one for my uh, crochet granny stripe blanket and then some that I just use for whatever noodling around. Uh, but I decided, okay, if I'm, if I'm going to really get into this doily thing, I, I want to invest <laughs> and get some good tools because yeah, otherwise I'm just going to pull my hair out and go crazy. But anyway, um, I treated myself. <laughs> uh, Amazon was having a good deal on these and uh, since I love and enjoy using tulip crochet hook needles, I treated myself to a little set of crochet hooks. Um, again, these are Etimo tulip uh, lace lace uh, crochet hooks, and it comes with a set of. Oh, here they are. How pretty are those? So it's like I want to say they're like lavender. They say that they're lavender periwinkle colorway like colorways um but the handles are like this really beautiful like lavender periwinkle colorway and then this one is actually did not come with the set i just put that in there because but anyway it comes with really nice embroidery scissors and um 
just you know a basic uh basic ruler which is handy uh so yeah i don't know i for, i believe these retail for like 45 dollars the whole set was like 45 dollars and i was like you know what i'm gonna use it it's always good to have a set on hand so i again i treated myself um and yeah you get this really lovely lovely case so uh yeah so i'm gonna be using these to crochet me some doilies uh so i'm you know Gonna, hopefully gonna have a lot of uh, again I'm gonna have a lot of fun with that next week and I also want to say thank you to everybody who did join in um in the uh, the thread for the doily brigade so looking, ooh, looking forward to seeing what you guys make sorry I feel like I've just been rambling this entire segment but anyway lots of details to get out um, so I if you are curious about those I will post a link in the show notes which I forgot to mention show notes for this episode and every other episode can be found over at uh, well, um, yarngasmpodcast.com. So, yes. Okay. So that is it for, I guess, yeah, mail acquisitions. Uh, it was good. I did not get any more yarn. Um, oh, I, I lied. I did get some yarn. So I lied. I have more stash enhancement. Uh, but again, as I said, I did not purchase this for myself. This was a wonderful, lovely gift. Uh, from Christine of Skinny Dipping Yarns, who, if you are not familiar, uh, my eyeball shawl, 50% uh, of that was knit with Skinny Dipping Yarns. The the people and the iris uh, is her colorway, and I purchased that at India Entangled, uh, which I, where I first met her. And so Christine got in touch with me, and she said, "Hey, I heard through the grapevine that you love mauve," and I confirmed that I love mauve. And uh, she said, "Hey, like her friend had purchased this yarn, and she wasn't crazy about the colorway, and so she sent it to her." Long story short, she wanted to destash this yarn and asked if I would be interested. So I received two, four four skeins of Holst yarn. Oh my gosh, you guys! I am in love. I'm in love, you guys. Yeah, it's it's mauve, it's mauve, uh, and I believe it's la mould and bamould. So 55% la mould and 45% bamould, and I believe it's cot um, silk and cotton. I have to. I will. I will post the translation in the in the down bar. But I believe cotton is a, one of the fiber contents in here. Um, but I first heard about this yarn via uh, the Stitched in Sweden podcast hosted by Maria and then Ellie of Skander Knits had some of this yarn and yeah, it's I've heard good things about this yarn. Like knitting it up, it feels a little stiff, but after you soak it and block it, it just blooms. So it becomes like a totally different yarn after... Um, after you block it but I don't it might be a different base that they're talking about um, because yeah there is some cotton content in here but either way it's mauve it's beautiful no idea what I'm gonna knit with it maybe a pullover or something there is okay I'll talk about it next time but anyway this might have to become that whatever I'm thinking of um, so yeah and it is it is fingering weight I believe is it it might actually be lace I don't know I don't know but anyway, very happy to have it. Christine, if you're watching, thank you so much. This was really awesome to get in the mail. Um, but yeah, four skeins to work with. Very, very excited. So, okay, I'm gonna move along to sewing. Uh, I don't have any finished objects to share with you this week as far as sewing is concerned, but I did get a haul. Um, I did treat myself to a lovely haul of sorts. Um, but first, I should probably chat about this fabric uh, that I purchased uh, last two weekends ago. Dennis and I met up with my parents. Uh, we before we met up with them, we went uh, we took a drive through Nyack, New York. I don't know if you're familiar with it, but you know it's a really quaint little town. They have a lot of nice little shops there. Uh, Dennis found this really awesome uh, yarn shop, which we poked into. That was lovely. I didn't get anything, but then we stumbled upon a fabric shop, a quilting shop to be exact. And I'm blanking on the name of it, but I will pop it in the down bar, bar or list it in the show notes. Uh, but really lovely fabric store, um, and they had they had everything. Just wall-to-wall -wall fabric, mainly quilting cotton because it was a quilt shop. Um, but yeah, if you ever are in Nyack, New York, uh, definitely check it out. Um, but I stumbled upon their sale area, and lo and behold, there was this one fabric that I've had my eye on on fabric.com and other places that for some reason it's always been sold out, uh, but it, it you know me, I love working with um, double gauze fabric. Uh, it's my favorite, like one of my favorite fabrics to work with because it's so soft and I, it wears so well. But this was on their sale rack and I could not resist. So 
I purchased it. And it's so soft and I I really don't know what I want to make with it. I, at first I thought a skirt, but I've only got two yards. It's beautiful. It's this plum, like deep plum maroon background with all these little stars on it. Um, I forget who makes this. I believe it is, what does it say on the selvage? Um, Lizzie House for, yeah, Lizzie House for Andover Fabrics. And yeah, I, this has to be like a skirt or a top or something. I don't know. Two yards, I can make it work. So anyway, was really excited to stumble on that. Um, so stay tuned to see what I make with that. Uh, but then I was browsing fabric.com like you do for actually because I did purchase a pattern by Colette. I purchased this at Brooklyn General a couple weeks ago when I was hanging out with Allison. It's the Violet Top by Colette. Um, and I'm kind of out of my out of my comfort zone. I don't really wear button down Peter Pan color dresses, but I'm willing to experiment. I'm willing to experiment. And I saw a bunch of versions of this online and I was like, it's so pretty and so sweet. And I don't know, it's like something makes me want to make this. And so I noticed a lot of the, I'm like, again, totally out of my comfort zone. I don't wear a lot of bright florals or like anything super cream. Like I don't wear a lot of whites or creams, uh, but for some reason, the versions that I saw in this uh, in this pattern just spoke to me, and I kind of wanted to treat myself to some Liberty fabric. <laughs> like that's the first that's the first type of fabric that came to mind when I saw this pattern. So, and I stumbled, you guys. I, when I saw this, my mouth just watered. I was like, I have to get some of this. So, I got this fabric. Yes, it's Liberty Liberty fabric, Liberty of London in their cotton lawn fabric base, I guess you could call it, but it's got all the Kristen elements, mauve <laughs> and purples. It's just so delightfully like bright goth, I wanna say. Uh, so I don't, I don't know. This might be a little much for, for me. I don't know, I, maybe, maybe this with like a black collar. Oh, <gasps> you guys, I think that's what I'll do. I could totally see that. Like instead of, you know, just having this as the main part and then having like a black Peter Pan collar, go with it. I'm so, that excites me. Okay, I think I'm gonna do that. Um, I just have to find, I think I have enough. I have some black broadcloth in my in my scrap stash that I can make work, but you guys, and some mauve buttons, mauve buttons, yes. Okay, I'm excited now. I wanna make this so badly, so. Um, but again, I, I wanted to get, I got two yards of this, um, but they sent it to me in pieces, so two, two pieces, so two one yard pieces. So I think I can, I can make it work. It'll work, it'll be fine. Um, but I do have to make a muslin because the finished garment measurements uh, for the bust is 35. Again, it, I believe this pattern is meant to have some ease to it, but I think I wanna shave off maybe, maybe like an inch. So maybe, maybe two inches because I don't like things that are too billowy um, and they don't give the waist. So yeah, I'm gonna make a muslin, see what adjustments need to be made and then go from there. Uh, because yeah, with Liberty fabric, you don't you don't wanna just wing it. You don't wanna wing it with Liberty because that would just be sad if it came out really wrong. Um, anyway, but uh, last week I showed off my Gertie dress that I made and I wanna make another one naturally because I love it and I've been wearing the thing to death. Um, and yeah, thank you so much to everybody for all the wonderful compliments. It's, got a good good reception uh, so <laughs> I'm very happy with the way it turned out very proud of it so um, yeah naturally I'm gonna make another one and of course this has been out of stock for quite some time on fabric and they just got some in yeah it's more Liberty fabric so <laughs> yeah yeah so I'm gonna make another one out of this I love this fabric print so much and yeah it has to happen uh, especially because I you know, the dress fits so well on me. I know it's gonna fit and I'm not afraid. Normally I would be petrified to cut into this, but because I know the pattern fits so well, I'm not as afraid. But I, it will be getting a lining this time. I will be making a nice little lining for it. It's, I, the pattern does come with a, a facing, uh, which is kind of like a little lining, but I definitely want it to have a little more body and a little more um, structure to it. So it will be getting aligning so anyway very very excited about that um but wait wait you guys there's more uh i saw this i got three yards 
of some gorgeous eyelet fabric. And yeah, I made another Gertie dress out of similar eyelet fabric, uh, but this one has kind of like a chevron, chevron texture to it. So there you go. It's really cool. Nothing to write home about, but it'll be really cool for just a basic dress, black dress. Um, I should probably throw it in the wash, thinking out loud. Um, that's what I do. Generally, when I get a new shipment of fabric in, I immediately toss it into the wash so it's pre-washed and ready to go when inspiration strikes. So, if, you know, that's, that's a little trick, I guess, or tip, if you will. Um, so yeah, black eyelet fabric cannot go wrong with that. I should probably pop it back in its plastic bag to save keeping, and so I know how many yards I have. Um, and then the other thing that I got, oh yeah, I got two more things. This is really cool. I don't know what drew me to it, but it's it's jersey fabric, but it's that burnout. It's got this really cool like lace burnout fabric. So yeah, this will need like a lining or something to it, but or if I do make either like an Agnes top out of it or a lady skater dress out of it, um, I'm probably I'm, I will have to wear a camisole under here. Otherwise, I'm gonna give the, I'm gonna be giving people a show if I don't. So anyway, um, this is it's really like an interesting texture. I don't know if you can see, but it has like this kind of like eyelash texture to it. It's pretty pretty awesome and very goth. So um, I got two yards of that, or no, I think I got a yard and a half of it. There really is no method to my madness. I'm just like, but now that I'm thinking in hindsight again, I was like, maybe I should have gotten two yards so I could make a lady skater dress out of this. Um, but this might just become an Agnes top. Uh, and yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Anyway, there's that. And then last but not least, um, I got some Shelly, Shelly fabric. Um, four yards again, because why not? And it's not that expensive, but it's mauve. Mauve Shelly fabric. Uh, I don't think this, this will be another Gertie dress. I mm, I think I need something. I could, it, it could be a really nice Gertie dress. Um, I call it a Gertie dress, but if you are wondering which Gertie dress, oops, I'm talking about this dress. So Butterick uh, B6453, and I made this version last week if you were just tuning in. So I don't know if this is going to become that, uh, but it's because it's mauve. <laughs> I had to come home to me. So we'll see what happens. I think I want to make like a zinnia skirt or uh, yeah, a zinnia skirt or something skirty. We'll, we'll see. We'll see what comes of that. But yeah, that is my fabric haul. Quite a large haul. Um, you know, got to build up the stash. I don't know. My friend that was supposed to come over uh, and have a sew date with me had unfortunately canceled, but we rescheduled. So she's coming over uh, after I get back from Cape Cod. So we should have a lot of fun with that. Uh, very excited to have her over. Um, and by then I should have my new studio set up and we can spread out and sew all the things and have an awesome, awesome day of sewing. So, okay, uh, I am going to move along to, um, I'm going to skip Ask Away again this week because I just have quite a lot to do today. So I'm going to mosey along into shop update because I will be having a shop update uh, tomorrow, Friday, August 4th. 4th, am I correct? Yes, August 4th at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. So let me go get my yarn that I have to share with you. Okay, so despite moving all my stuff down into the basement unit, <laughs> I still have been a busy bee uh, dyeing yarn. I'm still upstairs. But uh, yeah, I, ha I will be having a shop update tomorrow, as I mentioned. Uh, a lot of the same colorways that I had last week, uh, but some other ones mixed into, I'm throwing some other ones into the mix. But um, I will have some more Moon Cusser. Um, dying more of this today. This is from last week. Uh, these, if they look a little bit different, uh, it's because they have been reskeined. Um, and reskeining basically means just putting them on the reskeiner and it just jumbles up the colors um, in the skein. So you can see, uh, it gives you a good idea of how the colorways, how the colors in the skein play together in case you're wondering what reskeined means. Uh, so if you can look really here, yeah, you can see it's the colors are all like very well mixed in with each other. You can still see the speckles and everything, but um, let me show you what it looks like non reskeined. So here's a non reskeined colorway. So you can see like the colorways are more um, localized. I don't know what do you, they're more, you can see the colors, uh, different colors in the skein to, are more together as opposed to dispersed, whereas you know. Here, they're a little more jumbled up, which is a, what a lot of um, dyers who dye self-striping yarns uh, do. They tend to reskin a lot of their colorways. I happen to like the way 
my yarn looks non reskeined but sometimes it has to happen because after some skeins come out of the dye pot they're a little tangled and to manage the mischief and detangle it you have to reskein it so anyway just a little fyi in case you're curious but yes i will have some moon cusser in the shop tomorrow um i will have some more uh last unicorn unicorn here is on volca uh a nouveau and i will have some more whoop, i'll have some more uh grim here it is on blitzed my selena base and some narwhal up here i will have some more enjoy the silence um and if <laughs> another slight explanation uh if you are familiar with my enjoy the silence colorway you might notice that it looks a little different. Uh, that is because the dye that I'm using, they actually had to reformulate the dye. So it comes out a little differently. It doesn't, um, it's the same color, but it doesn't break in, in the dye pot the way it used to. So I kind of had to find a workaround for that. But yeah, the consequence of that is that my colorway, <clears throat> the colorway doesn't turn out as it used to turn out. Uh, unfortunately or fortunately you might like the way this looks better but uh it's a little more saturated a little more um yeah i'm gonna say saturated but yeah anyway uh i'm, I'm debating whether or not i want to keep this or rename it because it's definitely a departure from the original formula um or colorway that i i dyed uh so in case you're wondering there's that uh and then next up i will have some more pandora here we go here it is on narwhal and here it is on nouveau my singles base some more golf day cake. <laughs> Ooh, I grabbed two skeins of, of it on normal. But anyway, here's golf day cake. Um, and I also have it on Blitz and what else? Um, Nouveau as well. And last but not least, I will have some Stardust. And it's been a while since I dyed this colorway up as well. But I will have this. Uh, here it is on Nouveau. And this is uh, one of the colorways that uh, Nina of uh, the This Old Knit podcast, she used uh, one of uh, this colorway as one of uh, the colorways in her Oracle shawl, which I thought turned out absolutely beautiful. So this will be in the shop in case you would like to get your hands on some. Um, and again, I'm going to be dyeing up some more yarn today and tomorrow. Uh, so stay tuned. Again, if you would like to keep track of um what colorways will be in the shop definitely subscribe to my newsletter uh which you can subscribe to by visiting my online shop volanvineyarns.com scrolling all the way down to the bottom of the page and entering your email address and uh I, I do my best weekly to keep you updated with what colorways will be in the shop and then usually either thursday or friday i will update the website blog uh with a, a list of the colorways that will be available in that shop colorways and bases um so yeah okay um that's it so oh yes and there will be some more oracle kits available um so keep an eye out for that and i just want to say yes uh again the oracle shawl has been published uh and i hope you enjoy and i actually sent out an update of uh an update to the pattern uh today because uh, some wonderful knitters uh, informed me that there was some confusion about one of the port portions and there was a typo. Anyway, thank you. Thank you so much for catching that. Again, you know, even though the pattern has been test knit and tech edited, there's always an opportunity for little typos and details to be left out. So I apologize for any confusion. Um, I did make corrections and sent out an update with all that errata corrected. So uh, yes, Okay, um, I think that is it for what shop update and whatnot. So I am going to move along to Blather, which is a segment where I chat about what's been going on in my life. So let's get into it. Okay, as for Blather, yeah, it has been quite a busy few weeks. So yeah, last weekend, last week, uh, Becky was in town. We got together, uh, got together with a couple of friends. We went to our favorite restaurant Eastwick for our burrata fix, which, oh my gosh, you guys, burrata, burrata, burrata. I love me some burrata. Um, yeah. So, and it was funny cause Dennis and I had, we, we didn't really, I didn't realize that we were actually going to go to Eastwick. So Dennis and I had gone there for dinner the previous night and then 
sure enough, the next day, everyone was like, let's go to Eastwick. Let's, let's just do it. I'm like, great. All right. I'm always down for Eastwick. So, um, I, I held off on the broad of the second night, but yeah, I'm always down for eating there. Um, it's so good. Uh, so anyway, yeah, it was really great to see. It's always great to see my friends and especially Becky since she was in town visiting from Germany. Um, I really want to cast on a pair of her Taunus socks. I'm just trying to get my other socks off the needles first. <laughs> Try to have like one pair on the go. Uh, but yeah, it's anyway, Taunus socks are amazing and I just, I want to cast on a pair so bad. Um, all right guys, so yesterday I went to the hardware store, like you do, and uh, I took a gander at their, their paint chip section and I decided if when I ever move down into the basement and make it my studio workspace, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have a mauve wall it needs to happen. A mauve wall it needs to happen. So I got I got all the mauve shades. Now I don't want this to be like in your face mauve, but I want it to be mauve. So I think I've settled. <laughs> I've settled on a couple color colors. You can see that. But I think it either has to be mauve mist or Victoriana. I don't know. This is too pinky, but I think either these two colorways <sighs> it makes my heart sing. So yeah, I, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna paint a mauve wall. Just one because it is, it is a basement. I don't want to make it too dark. Uh, we do get a good amount of sunlight in the front room, which will be the office admin area. So I, you know, I'm gonna definitely have a desk there, a lot of shelves for packaging and whatnot, but then I'm also gonna set up a little area for, you know, in case friends want to come over, hang out and knit. Um, you know, we do have a kitchen down there. So that is just going to be a little fun um, area for knit nights. Uh, yeah, so I'm I'm very excited, you guys. I can't I can't tell you how excited I am. Um, yeah, Dennis is going to move some of his stuff down there. I think for now, just the treadmill uh, because right now we have a treadmill that we never use. It's in the middle room and there's no ventilation in there whatsoever. So um, yeah, it'll 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 work out. It'll be good. So anyway, uh, yeah. What else did I want to talk about? Um, I guess what I've been reading. Uh, I've been reading, who knew? Uh, yeah, I have to say it's when it comes to reading, because it's such an investment, like just time and attention. And I listen to a lot of audiobooks, So I, I wish that I had enough time to sit down and actually read a physical tangible book. But sometimes it's just not, it doesn't happen because yeah, I'm a slow reader. I will say that I have to read every single word, word for word. I, I can't just speed read or graze phrase reading is that what you call it yeah I just can't glance at a page and read everything I, I just have to tell myself the story in my head I'm just one of those people so uh, audiobooks are a lifesaver um, so I've in the past like I've just I feel like I haven't been lucking out too much with books like audiobooks like I've been enjoying some but as far as like series are concerned um, yeah, I just haven't really found anything that's I've been like, yes, this book is awesome. It's amazing. Uh, but recently I discovered a book through, I, I can't remember, Goodreads or um, Audible. I want to I think it was Goodreads, but they said, if you like, if you enjoy this book or this type of book, um, you will definitely enjoy this type of book. So I discovered, uh, learned, heard of this book uh, called A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Moss. And oh my gosh, you guys. You guys, <laughs> it is amazing. It is my, I, I cannot stop listening to this book. I swear, I, I texted uh, Nina yesterday. I sent her a snapshot of how much I listened to. I'm on the second book already, um, but I sent her a snapshot for my Audible. And apparently yesterday I listened to seven and a half hours and 45 minutes of this book. I think I have 15 more minutes left on the second book and then I get to move on to the third book and I'm gonna be so upset when this ends because it is it is that good. So the first book is a blatant retelling of Beauty and the Beast, but it becomes so much more, you guys. It is just, the storytelling is great. Uh, it, I will say it moves, it, they, are, they are long books, but it, it moves, it goes. Um, if you love uh, if you love fantasy, if you love fairies, it basically uh, it, again, like I said, it's a retelling of Beauty and the Beast, but um, instead of Beauty and the Beast, you have mortals and fairies. So yeah, again, if you love fantasy, if you love fairies, if you love Game of Thrones, Hunger Games, um, with a dash of romance peppered in there, uh, yeah, this is the book for you. I will say, or the series for you, but I will say um, there are a few graphic. Uh, sex scenes in there, so maybe not specifically for young adults. Um, 
but yeah, I would say like mature, like very mature young adults if I had to, but don't take my word for it. For it. If you have young adults in your family, you might want to just give it a quick flip through because I don't want to be the authority on that. But anyway, yes, there, there are a couple graphic scenes uh, within the series, so uh, I will just put that out there. But I have really been enjoying it. Uh, again, I'm going to be so upset when this series ends. Uh, I really hope they make a movie out of it. Uh, but yeah, I've just thoroughly, thoroughly been enjoying it. I might want to do a yarn club based on it, but anyway, I'm fangirling. Uh, so that's what I've been reading slash listening to uh, as far as what I've been watching uh, Game of Thrones That I think they're on next week is gonna be the fourth episode. It's been good. I've really been enjoying it uh, I'm still working my way through Twin Peaks. I've watched the last episode of um, the second season. So now I get to dive into um, The new se uh, the new series so uh, season three I guess on Showtime so very excited too, but I've just been so enamored with reading a court of thorns and roses and I yeah anyway um so yeah that's that's pretty much what's been on my plate uh otherwise I think that is it for this week so thank you so much for tuning in as always I'm very happy that you take some time out of your day to watch and hang out with me and uh I will try to podcast from Cape Cod no promises <laughs> again it's this is becoming a, during the summer my podcast becomes a bi-weekly thing um it's just the way it goes, but I will do my best to record from there uh, and keep you updated. If not, follow me on Instagram uh, where I, I am most active and you can follow up with me. Uh, but yes, happy knitting and I will see you next time. Bye. Ba -da -da. Up, but it's 55% Lamoud, 45% uh, Bomb. Oh, God, I totally butchered that.